Hi, I'm Carrie, and welcome back to my channel. I wanted to go ahead and do Marlena Teresa's tag, Tarot to the Extremes. I've really been enjoying watching everybody's videos and the differences and the choices of the decks for the categories. I will admit I had a very difficult time um, picking some tarot decks for certain categories. And I decided for one category to uh, make it two Oracle decks because I had a hard time figuring out um, a tarot for it. And when we get to that one, I'll let you know. But um, here are my choices. For the first category, we have your minimalist deck versus your most maximalist deck. And this one I did have difficulty in because I don't have very minimal decks as far as tarots go. I could have picked two or three oracles to fit as a minimalist style, um, but this is um, the best one I could come up with and I think it fits it pretty perfectly. This is the Dream Visions Tarot and it is one of my favorite decks and it's a very special deck for me. Um, and I get very deep readings from it, but the images on it are very minimal and you just basically have the colors and it's kind of pippish, I guess. Um, maybe not exactly the normal style pip, but I, I consider it pippish. And even, even that, it just, um, it's beautiful and very minimalist style, but there's just enough on here to get what you need from it for um, a pretty deep reading. So my maximalist deck is the Four Hoxa tarot. I love this deck. I think it's stunning. I think the artwork is gorgeous. And um, for me to be drawn to this kind of deck is very out of my norm and a little bit out of my comfort zone as well. It has the um, symbolism, I guess, of the rider weight system. It's very different and uh, there's a lot going on in the images and there's a lot to uh, look at and dive into in each of these images and it's, I just feel it's just so beautiful and it's not one that I can do a quick reading with. This is one that I like to take my time and do a more um, in-depth reading and um, go slow so I can absorb what's in these images but this is my choice for minimalist and maximalist. The next category is daytime versus nighttime. And I do not read with my decks um, daytime versus nighttime. I don't have a specific tarot that is um, used only in the evenings or I don't have a specific tarot that's used only in the morning. So when I picked for this category, I had to pick um, through the aesthetics of the deck. And uh, these are both mass market, so I'm sure you, if you have them or seen them, you recognize the backs. But my daytime deck is the um, Everyday Witch Tarot, and my nighttime deck is the Tarot of Vampires. And this one is new to me. I've only owned it, I don't know, a few weeks, not that long. I actually, um, <laughs> just took it out of its wrapping because I haven't had a chance to uh, work with it and I want to work with it in a very specific way. So I've just been kind of putting it aside until I can spend more time with it. But that's rambling. Um, the reason I picked the Everyday Witch for my daytime deck is because of the images in it. There are a lot of daytime um, scenic um, cards and 
it was the very first deck that came to mind when I was thinking of what deck would be good to represent a daytime feeling. And the nighttime deck is a given. It's vampires, it's dark, it's moody. Um, you think of vampires, you think of nighttime. Unless you're a twilight vampire, then you sparkle in the day. But other than that, it's a... Um, I think it fits the bill very well for a nighttime deck, but I would have absolutely no problem using this at any time of the day. So those are my pick for daytime and nighttime. The next category is best shuffle versus worst shuffle. So my best shuffle is my Wheel of the Year Tarot. And this is my best shuffle because I use it all the time. It's very well broken in. Um, I can pick it up and shuffle with it whenever um, without having to worry about the cards flying all over the table. And I, it's just, I, it's, I think it's my best shuffle because like I said, it is very heavily used and um, I don't have any any problem with it. And as much as I've been shuffling with it, it doesn't even have a bow, which I kind of like that. Um, so that is my best shuffle. My worst shuffle, I guess I should move those. This is the Tarot of Light. It's too big <laughs> for my hands and um, I have a very, I can't riffle it. I can't riffle it at all. The card stock is very thick and it's too big, but it's, I don't know. I don't, I know a lot of people like the matte card stock, but it, I, I'm not very fond of it only because it tends to clump together when you're trying to shuffle it even overhand. And I, I don't like that. So this is, I mean, I can attempt to try to, Oh, shuffle this. Oh my gosh. But yeah, it's got to be, I have to push it together. I can't bridge it. I don't have the, I don't have the um, hand capacity <laughs> to do it. So this is considered my worst shuffle, the Tarot of Light. I still love the deck. I think it is a beautiful deck. Um, very soothing messages in it, but yeah, it doesn't shuffle well. So our next category is confronting versus comforting. And my comforting deck that I picked, I actually feel could have fit several of these categories. Comforting, um, light work, underrated. I could have put it in um, multiple different places, but I just wanted to use something different for each category. So my most... Um, confronting deck is the, let's scooch this over, um, the Dream Keepers. And this is rather new to my collection, but the few um, readings that I've done with it have been just kind of right there in your face. Um, no beating around the bush, not that any tarot deck does. I and mean, this is, I guess, kind of personifying this deck a little bit, but you know, um, it just doesn't, doesn't pull any punches and it just tells you, you know, this is how it is and this is where you need to go to, to get it done. And um, even though I've only used it and, and a few times and only had it, a very short period of time, I have fallen in love with this deck very quickly, which is another one out of my comfort zone of the um, Rider Waite Smith clone. But anyway, that is my comforting, or I'm sorry, confronting deck. And my most comforting is the Tarot Muha. I just love this deck. I even love the borders around the edges. Um, I actually feel that the borders kind of draw you into the picture. I love the pastel colors. I love the um, characters. I love the softness that this deck has to it. It has given me um, 
very gentle readings and became a fast favorite. And the reason I feel that it is um, could have fit in the underrated category because I don't hear that many people talk about it. And I know it's probably been out for quite a long time where I've only had it a couple years. So it's on the, the newer end for me, but um, I just feel that there is a lot to get out of this deck. But that's not the category it's in. It's in the uh, most comforting and it is definitely a comfort to me. The next category is a deck you would use every day compared to the deck you would use every so often. And my everyday deck, of course, is the Light Sears. And my every so often is actually the um, Forest of Enchantment Tarot. Um, Light Sears, it's just, it's really kind of a workhorse deck for me. I use it quite often. Um, I will grab it whenever I can't think of another deck to grab. Um, I've used it for anything and everything, any type of reading. Um, it's just uh, one of my favorites and my go-tos. Uh, but the uh, Forest of Enchantment is beautiful and storybook and um, lovely, but I don't really use it that often. Um, I only think about pulling it out in uh, springtime. Um, it's my only, I think it's my only um, animal-based, I know there's people in it, but where this has uh, several animals in it. Tarot. I guess it's not animal-based. There's people. But um, yeah, I just, I never think of using it. And every time I flip through it, like now, and look at it, I'm like, man, this deck is so magical. I really need to use it more often. So um, maybe I will eventually start um, thinking of picking this up rather than um, some of my other decks because it really is gorgeous but this is my every day versus my every so often okay our next category is light work versus shadow work and this category is the one that I inserted two oracles in rather than two tarot and thinking about it I could have there's two tarot that I probably could have um, used, but I had a hard time thinking of a tarot specifically for um, shadow work. Uh, the tarot that I had originally picked for the light work um, category is the Angel Wisdom Tarot, um, but I thought I would just go ahead and do two oracles. So the light work is an angel oracle for me, of course, and this is the one by Kyle Gray, and it is um, his angel guide oracle. And this is my favorite angel oracle right now. I know a lot of people gravitate towards his angel and ancestors deck, and I really like that one too. But if I'm looking for some angel energy in an oracle, this is the one that I, I run to and I pick up right away. Um, it's the one that I use when I need a little bit of reassurance and things. And it is one of my favorite and definitely consider it a light work um, deck. The one that I picked for shadow is uh, the soul cards one and two. Um, I feel that these cards are, they're a little bit intense and I, I work with them slowly. Um, I don't, uh, 
I don't use them every day, and I sure don't use them for everything. Um, like I said, I feel the readings from these are a little bit on the intense side, so I am very slow and cautious in reading with them. I think that images um, say a lot, and if you if you really let your intuition go and just take your time with them, you can get something very deep and intense from these readings. So that's why for right now, I, I would consider this more of my shadow deck. So those are the two decks that I have for light work and shadow work. And our last category, hopefully I didn't miss any, is overrated versus underrated. And if you um, saw my deck modification or the decks I've modified video, then um, you'll understand uh, why I'm, I'm not, I guess I'm being a little biased <laughs> in picking the, the Nicoletta Ciccoli as my overrated deck. I just, I don't know. I feel that it's, um, I don't want to, I don't know, if, say the hot thing right now. And yes, I modified it into an oracle, but then went back and put the um, tarot symbolism back onto the deck because I'm having an identity crisis with this deck right now and um, don't know what I want to do with it. But it's all over and I see it in a lot of videos recently and talked about recently and I don't know, it's just, I feel that it's maybe being gushed over a little bit um, more than I would consider. But like I said, I think I'm being a little bit biased. Um, I can connect with some of the cars very easily, but um, it's just, it's very far, strays very, very, very far from the rider weight as far as I'm concerned, it does. So I just think it's the kind of old hot new thing maybe. But what I feel is the most underrated is an absolute favorite of mine and that is the Good Karma Tarot. I love this deck. I think it's cute. I think it is, um, vibrant in colors. I like the modern take on the images. I like some of the diversity that's in the deck. Yes, the cardstock isn't the greatest and yes, it's slippery and yes, it'll fly all over the table, you know, if you don't shuffle it just right. And I don't care. This deck brings me joy and I hardly hear anybody talking about it or using it or um, anything like that. I think I've only seen a couple videos about it on Tarot Tube, and it is one of my favorites. It's a great reader. I love to pair it with, um, I love to pair it actually with the um, Angel Guide Oracle that I just showed for my light work decks. But yes, it's a, it's a big favorite of mine, and um, I could have actually put this in a everyday category because I would I would pull this at any point in time to read with it so that is my most underrated deck so guys that's it thanks for sticking with me as I fumbled along and babbled a little bit about this um Hashtag tarot to the extreme and thanks to Marlena for coming up with this tag. It was really fun to do and made me really think about my decks in a different way. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and until next time, bye.